Well, I discussed this with my sister. It's something you really have to, you know, think about hard. She said a fish, but I said no, no, no. I was thinking more of a peanut. And why would that be? You need a peanut for life, for growth. A peanut does so many different things. You can't make it without a peanut. All right, well, that's, that works for me. I don't know if the course is still down. Let me see. <laughs> see if I can come this way. My title is, what is my title? A new, you, a unique journey to food. I know we all have different backgrounds and, and we have experiences that have changed us and developed our palate along the way. Well, mine is very unique. And I hope that everybody's eating already, so that's good. <laughs> My mother, uh, she forms the basis for this first story. She used to make something that is called, or was called, dump soup. I don't know if y'all know what dump soup is. <laughs> but whatever was in the refrigerator, <laughs> someone knows. She would put it in the pot, put some water on it put it on the stove and that would be the soup. It doesn't matter what kind of vegetables there were. It doesn't matter if it was a chicken leg. All of it would go in the pot and it would be dump soup. My mother had this wonderful idea of helping senior citizens so she would pack it all up and put it in different containers and make me, baby girl, go around the neighborhood and give it to certain individuals so they would have this delicious soup. <laughs> So I did that, and one of the people that whose house I had gone to was my godmother, who is um, what, about 94, Sharon? She will be next year. She'll be 94 next year. So a few years ago, I was <laughs> just a little baby, of course, and I was taking her. <laughs> That's not the joke. <laughs> I was taking her. I was taking her some of this delicious soup. She asked me what was in it. I said, I'm not going to tell you. You have to taste it. My mom made it. She said, your mom made it? I said, yes. Well, what's in it? I just said, I'm not going to tell you. She said, tell me what's in it. Are there any vegetables in it? Yes, I think it was some vegetables in the refrigerator that had been there for about a week. So, yes, there's some vegetables in there. <laughs> so, eventually, she caught on. She said, well, I'm not going to eat it. I said, no, you have to eat it. My mother made it. She said, take it back home. I said, no, I can't take it back home. I can't take it back home. <laughs> so, she said, well, you eat it. No, I don't want to eat it. I saw her make it. <laughs> she said, well, I'll just keep it and I'll put it on the side so you won't get in trouble. So you won't have to take it back home. Then, later on, my godmother, who again will be 94 next year, made some soup of her own. She had uh, tomatoes that she had grown in the garden. They were beautiful tomatoes and all sorts of uh, things that she had grown in her own garden. She put it all together and had all these fresh vegetables and fresh meat. And I said, oh my goodness, this tastes awful. Because I wasn't used to eating all the fresh stuff. So when I tried the fresh stuff, it just it didn't work with my palate. So I thought she had done something wrong. My mother actually is from Mansfield, the big city. Um, my father's from Morningsport. So in the refrigerator when I was a little girl, my sister can testify to this. Testify. The, the bottom of the refrigerator had ketchup all along the bottom. I don't know if anyone had that experience, but the entire bottom row had ketchup. And I believe approximately half of the refrigerator had chicken pot pie. So that let you know my mother's ability to cook. <laughs> so people ask me today, people ask me today, can I cook? I said, do I look like I can cook? <laughs> But I, but I don't want to give that away yet. So when I was uh, a little older, I had a first cousin that would come in town and uh, he taught me how to fish. He said, uh, we're going to go and fish. And I was excited. Um, he said, uh, I said, what do, you, what do we need to fish? Do we need these things that you see on TV, the, the rods, the list? I want to do like the people on the back of the boat. <laughs> something about this. <laughs> so he said, no, 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 you don't need that. So do we need to stop by the store? No, no, you don't need that. So I left and just whatever I had on jeans and a little shirt peg. And we went 
and um, to the area not too far from my mom's house by Cross Lake. He said, but before that, everything you need is already there. Okay, I'm 10 or 11, so I go behind him. <laughs> and uh, he goes to another er an area, he digs up something, and a whole bunch of worms are there. I said, wow. Of course, there's a, a cup over to the side, so he put them in there. Then we went around to the area where we were going to fish. He found a little cane, broke it down. There was some line over in the corner. The hook was there. Put it. Then we fished. I caught about 20 fish. I was so excited, first time. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. <laughs> but but um, I had done a great job, so uh, after the, he had gone, I had done it again. So when I had done it again, my cousin was gone. I showed my mom, look, didn't catch as many as last time, but I have 15 fish. So she said, okay, call me when it's ready. When it's ready? <laughs> Did I say how old I was? <laughs> Needless to say, my sister, she's back there, Dr. Sam's back there. She didn't help me. Um, I had to, I had to catch the fish, skin it if it was catfish, scale it if it was not, clean it and cook it. Therein lies the beginning of my ability to cook. Yay. You're welcome. And since my mom is here, isn't here today, I'm going to tell you I did an excellent job. <laughs> it tastes outstanding. <laughs> but I have to tell you how I get to Café du Bon. Okay. I must tell Peggy that I have experiences in New Orleans. I went to Dillard University in New Orleans, loved Dillard, loved New Orleans, but Shreveport reigned supreme. And while there, you must go to Café du Monde. As a student, many of us know when you're in school, you're broke, broke, broke. You have negative money. I don't know how you have negative money when you're in school trying to get a degree to make money, but I had negative money. So having negative money, I remember once uh, all of the, some of my classmates who were left over for a period of time gathered all of our money together because we said we we're going to play this game and get something to drink and I'm not much of a drinker but it was about seven of us and we gathered all the money we had. We went to the store to buy something to drink and the guy said it's a dollar and thirty two cents. Don't ask me what we bought but we were seven cents short. <laughs> So that formed the basis of my legal skills and my ability to argue at that time. <laughs> I didn't know then I was going to be a lawyer. So I convinced the cashier to let all seven of us have this drink that I'm not going to identify again to take home even though we were seven cents short. So of course we did the same thing at Café du Monde. We must go to get the pillows up. Thank you, Peggy. Y'all was supposed to let's try this again. Pillows up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's why you gotta get them, Peggy. So we went there, and it, of course it was seven of us again, but there are only three in the bag. My degree is in math, so I was trying to help my classmates figure out how we're going to divide this up. Since I am the mathematician, I get one. <laughs> Y'all don't agree? <laughs> I get one, then there's six of them, so you can equally divide the other two between the six of them. It works for me. <laughs> so while still at Dilly University, which is my last story, are there any young people in here? <laughs> I had a classmate of mine who loved Popeye's chicken. I mean, loved Popeye's chicken. I'm thinking, you can't fry chicken. But anyway. You must taste my fried chicken, Heidi. You must. <laughs> she she said when her boyfriend would coming would come to the campus to visit her, if he would take her to Popeyes and get her two pieces, a biscuit, and some red beans and rice, then he would get <laughs> a good being the young naive person that I was. I said, what is some? get some. <laughs> she looked at me like I was stupid. <laughs> so, uh, once he realized that, he made frequent visits <laughs> to the campus to pick up my girl then girlfriend at the time, because he knew at the end of the night he would get so. Y'all are good. <laughs> so I would like to say, since we're at this fabulous restaurant, Ernest, with this fabulous, outstanding, uh, tasteful, 
beautiful, wonderful, filling food, men, if you're sitting in close proximity to a woman that you brought in, if you make sure she eats everything that she wants, maybe at the end of the night you will get some. some. <laughs>